Many people are claiming there's a bubble going on today. And there's a lot of people that are getting upset when they say, market's not going to crash. This thing's going to go up. This is the greatest economy we've ever had. You got to keep investing to the market. So who is right? So today, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm going to be a lawyer. And I'm going to give you 10 points on why I am leaning towards a bubble and a crash. And you will have to make that decision for yourself and pick apart my argument below. Comment, say, I totally disagree. You have no clue what you're talking about, but I'm going to make my case. We'll do some math. I'll give you some trends. Some of it will be technical. Some of it will be simple. But by the end, you'll be able to make a decision for yourself whether I'm making a good case or not. So let's get right into it. So uh, there's this guy named uh, Warren Buffett, who's a very wealthy man, very successful man who... Took his Berkshire Hathaway from where it was to where it's at today. He's worth around $80 to $100 billion. And when he gives advice about money, people listen. He has a famous saying that he's been saying for a long time. You've heard this before. You've read this before. Be fearful when people are greedy. Be greedy when people are fearful. Are people scared today? Are people greedy today? What do you think? You answered that one right there for yourself. So if you got to be fearful when people are greedy and today everyone's being greedy thinking they're going to, oh, GameStop or I mean, you know, American Airlines, Bitcoin. People are so greedy today. Maybe we ought to pay attention to what he said. Matter of fact, check this out. There's a guy named Michael Jordan, okay, who has a rookie card. This is his best rookie card, 1986 Fleer. And PSA is the top grading company in the world. There's only about 300 of these graded at 10, okay? Let me first give you the history of what happened with this thing here. Just... March 22nd, which is 11 months ago, this card sold for 48000 Then it went up to 51600 This is when the last dance came out. It came out a little before that. Then it went to ninety six. Then it went to one fifty. Just a month and a half ago, two months ago, this card was selling for $151,000 in the marketplace. You know what it just sold for? $738,000 for one card. In 11 months, this card went from 48000 to 738. Now, is it a $48,000 car? Absolutely not. Is it a $738,000 car today when there's 300 of these out there? I don't know about that. So why are people spending this kind of money? Is it because they're greedy? Is it because they made a lot of money? Is it because everyone's making money in the stock market and they have extra money to spend? I can't answer that, but I'll let you answer that one here. Now, let's get a little bit more technical here. So many times when you want to price a company's PE ratio, price to earnings, you take the formula and you divide whatever the stock's price is by their earnings. You divide that and you come up with the P.E. ratio, right? So P.E. ratio, typically, historically, you know, companies are between 15 to 17 percent. Domestic is about 17.47 percent today on P.E. ratio. Let me give you a couple examples of companies where their P.E. ratio is right now. You ready? So Tesla right now's P.E. ratio is 1,200. And 43, meaning it is overpriced, meaning people are banking on what this could go in the future, but it's not worth $763 billion today, which is why so many people are shorting the Tesla stock. Now, you may say, Pat, give me a break. It's Elon Musk. You talk a lot of good things about Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a genius. No question about it. As long as he runs Tesla, this thing's going to go to a price like that. However, let's take a look at some other companies, what their P ratios are. So Tesla was what? If you want to get a little closer, 1,243, right? Let's look at Microsoft, big company, Bill Gates, P ratio, 36.3. Now, you can just stay right here. If we go to Facebook, what's Facebook? Facebook P ratio, 26.71. That's a big company ran by Zuck. He's still running it. Let's go to another company like Apple. What is Apple's P ratio? 36.27. Let's go to another one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, give me another one, uh, Kai. Let's do Amazon, okay? Amazon's P ratio is 77.90. High, right? Let me take you back to Tesla. You mean to tell me 1,256 Tesla? You mean to tell me Tesla's a $771 billion company based on today, not future earnings? I don't know about that. This is concerning. So now, if the average historically PE ratio for a company has been 17.47. Take a look at this. Today, it is 39.86. Look at the history of PE ratios for S&P 500. Look at the history of it. 12, 13, 26, okay? You know, 23, okay? Let's go to 01. 9-11 happens. 42, what happens after 9-11? Boom! It drops, right? Okay, let's go over here. PE ratios, look how high it is. Mortgage, boom. You remember that? The bust, the bubble, boom. 
39.86. These are three trends that we can look at. Now, let's go take a look at Schiller. And by the way, for the uh, Mac, Max and Amin, you need to know that the lowest P ratio we've ever had was 5.31, which is 1917. The highest we ever had was 09. That's the big market crash, 123, right? Now, let's go to Schiller P.E. ratio. With Schiller, the difference between Schiller is Robert Schiller came out with the P.E. ratio, and they called it the Schiller P.E. ratio. What he did is, typically when the UCP ratio of Tesla being, you know, the number I showed you, which is what, uh, 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 what was it, uh, 1,200? The 12 month PE ratio, trailing 12 month of Tesla is what? 161.61, 12 month, which is still high, not 1,200, but still high. What Schiller did is, he went 10 years, is what he did. So all he did is he took that PE ratio, that's the day or maybe 12 months, he said, let's go 10 years and see what numbers it gives us. And look, we found that here. Take a look at this. Today, the Schiller P ratio is 35.65, second highest ever. When it was 30, it was Black Tuesday. What happened to Black Tuesday? Look at this, how the market dropped. You see it? What happened in 9-11? Boom, market dropped. Look where the P ratio was, Schiller P ratio, 10 years. We're at 35.65. That is not a good trend to be looking at. So, so far, we've covered a few different things. We've covered P ratio. Tesla, I give you a few other companies. We've covered Schiller, uh, a P ratio. We've covered when people are fearful, greedy, greedy, fearful, Buffett. We've covered the Jordan card that I showed you out of nowhere, a $48,000 car. I'll buy it for $738,000. How do you have that kind of money? Now, let's go to the next one. The next one is interest rates. Let's look at interest rates, okay? So when you look at interest rates, here's what you see. The history of interest rates in America, okay, this kind of worldwide kind of gives you an idea. You don't see anything being above what it is today. Today is as low as it's ever been. Now, if we really kind of break it down so you can see it even deeper, this is what you will notice. This is the federal funds rate 62-year historical chart, okay? Rates were just a little over, you know, a decade ago. They were what? 5.21, okay? 6.55. So, 2001, market tanks. We take it down to 0.98 under a Bush administration. To help the economy come back up, but we raise the interest rates again, right? Obama comes into office, takes office. He keeps it low, below 1% for nearly his entire term. And then Trump comes and says, we can't keep it at this. The rates go a little bit higher, but then eventually COVID hit. We have to take the rates low to what? 0 0.09. We haven't been this low for a long time. Go to the history of America, what it looks like, okay? Here. What we have, what happened in 81? This is Carter. If you look at Carter when he came in, rates went to the roof. CDs were paying 15, 16% at one point. What happened with Carter? One term president Reagan came up, came up with Reagan, Reaganomics and he brought it lower. So when you look at this and you say interest rates, who cares about low interest rates, Pat? Well, let me show you 30 year fix and I'll kind of give you an idea why this is so important to look at. If you go right now and we type in your zip code, this is Boca Raton, uh, interest rates today for 30 year fixed is roughly what? 2.875 at this bank, Chase is 2.92. Let's just say 3% 3, 3 is the interest rate today for what? For 30 year mortgage rate, today's what? 3%. So then let's just go do math. What does this have to do with anything? Pat, I don't know where you're going with this. Can you kind of help us out better on some what you're doing? Yeah, let's just say you're buying a $500,000 house today. I'm gonna do the math for you. So you're buying a $500,000 house today and you are gonna go with the current rate, which is what, 3% over 30 years, your payment today would be what? Stay over here, your payment would be what? 2,108. Why is that such an important number? Let me show you something simple on the paper here, and hopefully this will make sense. Here's how rates work. When interest rates are low, price of homes are what? High. But when interest rates are high, price of homes are what? Low, meaning, Right now, if the rates are three, I'm going to be able to buy a $500,000 house because I'm solving for this. I'm not solving for this. I'm not solving for this. When people buy a house, they say what? I can't afford $2,000 a month. Nobody says, I can afford a half a million dollar house. You go to your banker at Chase, at BFA, you say, I think I can pay $2,000 a month for a mortgage. Let me do the math. You qualify for a 3% interest rate. We can go as high as $500,000. Great. I get that pre-approval letter. Then I go to my realtor and I say, we can look at houses all the way up to what? $500,000. Now, here's a problem. Watch this here. If I raise this interest rate to 6%, which is what it normally was, it's $3,000. Same value house. 
but the rate went up to 6%. If that interest rate goes to 9%, what happens? Mortgage goes to $4,000. The couple sitting there at the bank saying, I can't pay $4,000 a month, but it's still only a $500,000 house. So come over here, I've done some math for you to simplify, to take a look at this. So if I get a $500,000 house at 3%, 30 years, I'm paying $2,108 a month. Total I'm gonna pay over 30 years is 758. If that goes to 6%, I'm paying $2,998. 1,079,000. If it's 9%, 4,000, 1,448,000. This is the problem. The problem is the following. If I am solving for what? If I'm coming in and I'm solving for the payment of 2,108 and I tell my mortgage guy, hey, I can only do $2,100 payment per month and the rates today are 6%, guess what I can only get? I can only get a $351,000 house. To be at that payment. Did that make sense? Which means today I may be able to afford a five hundred thousand dollar house because rates are three. But if the rates go to six percent, I can only afford a three hundred fifty one thousand dollar house. And if the rates go to nine percent, I can only afford a what two hundred and sixty two thousand dollar house. Which means today real estate is inflated, and uh, if they keep the interest rates this low, Powell keeps saying he's going to stay for another three years. Interest rates low, prices high, interest rate goes high. Prices go down. So this is this is one other thing to be thinking about where people are buying houses left and right. Oh, it's, it's just interest rates are so low. If it goes the other way around, do not be surprised if these same $500,000 houses are selling for four, $400,350 and same million dollar homes are selling for $700,000, $600,000 if that were to happen. So now let's go back to this. So is that a sign of a market crash? Yes, because we have kept the rates low for a long time and we can't go low for too long. Sometimes you would do it to just boost the economy a little bit, but to keep it for this long, since Obama came in, we kept the rates low below 1%. Since 08 for this long, this is like a bodybuilder being on steroids, growth hormone, everything you put for 20 years. You know what happens to you eventually? You have a heart attack. The market's about to have a heart attack if we continue like this. This is not something that's sustainable over and over and over and over and over again. That's another argument I'm making to you. Now let's go to a completely different argument. We just decide to raise the minimum wage to what? 15 bucks an hour. It's about to become official because Biden's got the uh, uh, Senate, House, and obviously he's the president and you know Kamala can vote. So it goes to $15 an hour. CBO does a case saying, hey, if we go to 15 bucks an hour, you just, I just want you to know, we're going to lose 1.4 million jobs. 1.4 million Americans are going to lose their job. No, we have to go to $15 an hour. You can't make a case today. It's going to 15 bucks an hour. No problem. Um, which industry has the most minimum wage employees? Which industry? Wall Street? That funds most of these political campaigns? No. Uh, real estate? No. Which industry has the most employees making minimum wage? Well, let's take a look. Well, according to U.S. facts here, if you go and look at it, food preparation and serving related has the most minimum wage employees. Hmm. Last 12 months, lots of jobs were lost, no? Around 15 million jobs were lost in hospitality, hotel, restaurants. So the industries that took the biggest hit, those small restaurants that took the biggest hit, now we're going to raise the minimum wage for the waiter or waitresses that work there. And the bus boys, we're going to now take them. So I'm running a restaurant. I'm already running on small margins of 3 4%. Now you're adding that on top of it. If restaurant business industries go out of business, who gets affected? What do you buy at restaurants? You just buy burgers? No, you buy beer, alcohol, liquor, liquor paper. Man, other industries could be affected. Yeah. You know, I spoke to Andrew Zimmerman, who has his own show, and he's been around TV for a long time, expert when it comes down to a restaurant and he goes, deals with the White House when it comes down to restaurants. He says nearly 50 million people are affected by this entire decision that was made with the restaurant business, you know, with the COVID shutdown. They're being affected tremendously. Does that potentially lead to a bubble and an effect? Maybe because it's delayed pain that's about to come up to small business owners. And what are we going to do? Every single time send $1.9 trillion to people? Is that really effective? Well, now that we're talking about the $1.9 trillion, why don't we take a look at the 1.9 trillion dollars, and how much money we've printed in the history of America. I don't know, let's just take a look. You ready? Here's what it looks like on what we've done, history of America, when we print money. Da -da 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 -da, 2000, look, we're at 2000, nothing crazy, okay? And then all of a sudden, what do you see? 
goes up, goes up, goes up. And what are we doing in 2020 with COVID? Look at this from 08, how much we printed with quantitative easing. But then look at that spike. Boom, we go up. That's a scary sight. Some say 40% of all the money in the history of America was printed just in 2020. Some say it's 18%. But it's between 20 to 40%. Almost a fifth of all U.S. dollars were created this year. Fifth, which means what? 20%. So do we keep solving problems by printing money? We got a printing press. Let's just keep printing money. It's okay. We'll solve the problem that way. That's the way to go about solving the problem, right? That's what we should do. No, that leads to fake success and fake money. And what is fake success and fake money? Do you ever met a fake rich person? What happens to them eventually? They lose the cars, they lose the house, they lose everything because they were fake rich. They were never rich. They were rich on the outside, but they were never rich on the inside. You ever see this? People look very happy. Oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. I'm so blessed as if they have zero problems. Deep down inside, they have a lot of issues. There's a lot of fake millionaires today, a lot of fake success today, a lot of that going on today. And by the way, we can't blame many of them because we are promoting this. This is the greatest time to get rich. Take advantage of it. Be greedy. This is what you should do. And folks don't realize we're not talking about set some money aside. We're not talking about emergency fund. We're not talking about get ready that if something bad happens, we're not talking about the rainy day. All we're talking about is flamboyant. This person did this, that person did this. All this stuff comes together. So now, let me go to another one. Excessive valuations I already gave you when we talked about Tesla. But some of the excessive valuations with Robinhood, GameStop, American Airlines, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond. What is that all about? That is another sign where the market today can be manipulated because if one person sends a tweet, this person goes on GameStop, Reddit. Strange things are going on when companies are being overvalued and they're not worth that. Even the Doge uh, uh, coin CEO says, we're not a $10 billion company. I don't even know what the hell is going on here. We're not a $10 billion company. The CEO makes a comment like that. We're the own CEO is concerned about that. Even Musk said, I think we're overpriced today in a tweet. But people are saying, no, we're not. Keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. That's another concern. And then last but not least, economic expansion went for how long? I think economic expansion went for 128 months. No one's even talking about it today, but economic expansion went for about 128 months. Okay, when you go for 128 months of economic expansion, then comes COVID. We forgot about it, that the market grew for 128 months, nearly 11 years. And then because of COVID, we had to shut down and the market tank 35% in one month, if you remember that. And then what happened? But take COVID out. Take COVID. COVID never happened. Say COVID never happened. There is no coronavirus. Nothing happened. And 2020 goes the way it did. How does the market go? Where does it go? 35,000, 40,000? That's still a bubble that's been going for 11 years. No econ economy expansion goes for 11 years. And the debt of the country keeps rising the way it's rising for us. And the interest rates... That's not sustainable. Eventually, there is a crash that's going to come. And it's not going to be pretty. And this wasn't a crash in 2020. We did not have a market crash. But 2020 was such a bad year. To rough. No, no, no. People got unemployment benefits. People got stimulus checks sent to them. People got bailed. People got bailed out in so many different ways where people didn't even want to get a job because they were making more money staying home than getting a job. This is not a sign of a market that's growing. Okay. This is a 11-year bubble that's been brewing, that's been going up. And when it drops, it is not going to be pretty. So having said that, that's my argument to you. I made about 10 or 11 points to you. You agree, put thumbs up. You disagree, put thumbs down, but give me your argument below. And if you want to find out more, you say, Pat, this is scary. What if this actually does happen? How can I prepare myself? I got a video I also did titled, Eight Ways to Prepare for a Market Crash. If you've never watched it, click here to go watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.